Okay. Well, it looks like we do have quorum, so why don't we go ahead and get started? Thank you, everybody. It's Tuesday, October 3rd, um, calling the meeting to order at 1.02 p.m. Um, I'll go ahead and start off with introduction and roll call. So, Onona Thone, Chair of the Council. Robin, I'll go to you next. Robin K. Lanai. Thanks, Robin. Maka'ala. Maka'ala Kaumuana Kawai. Thanks, Maka'ala. Tessie. Tessie Kinnaman, Hawaii. Thanks, Tessie. Mary. Mary Bajer, Hawaii Island. Thanks, Mary. Michelle. Michelle Lefebvre, Hawaii Island. Okay. Thanks, Michelle. Steph. Steph Dunbar Cole. All right. Thanks, Steph. And Rachel. Rachel Sprague, Lena E. All right. Thanks, Rachel. Um, I know Ron said he couldn't be here this month. Did we, um, ERP, did we, oh, sorry. Allison, go ahead first, finish with introductions. Allison Cotto, Deputy Attorney General. Um, and I just want to mention Jody Yi, who previously advised EAC, uh, just left my office yesterday to join Ethics Commission. Oh, okay. Well, good luck to Jody. Thanks, Allison. Okay, Jen and team, I'll go to you folks in the for ERP. Oh, uh, is it Jen? Jen Ching, ERP. Kim Ishimoto, Special Plan Scratch. Uh, Kaylee Yoshio. All right, thank you, folks. All right, so going back, I know Ron said he wasn't going to be here. Did we hear it all from Don, Mike, or Mahina? Don said yes. Mike said yes. Mahina said no. Okay. And there is I, I just texted Dawn. Okay, that's good. Well, we do have quorum right now, so um, at least we can proceed. And okay, somebody's logging in. All right. Hi, Dawn. How are you? Um, we're just in the middle of introduction or finishing up introduction. So if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself. Sure. Dawn Hager Nordblum from Maui. I'm alone in the office. Thanks, Dawn. And I, I think we, we don't need to say the whether we're alone anymore. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So we do have quorum and we'll proceed. Um, I know Mary Alice wasn't able to join us today, so we do not have an update, um, an interim director's update. Is there anything from ERP that needs to be announced at all? No? Okay. All right. We'll go ahead and move on then. Um, to item number three, review and adoption of the September 2023 meeting minutes. And thank you again, Kaylee, for keeping us up to date. Um, I'll give folks a few minutes if you want to look it over. I did um, provide some edits uh, ahead of, you know, just clean up stuff ahead of it being posted to the agenda. So, yeah, folks want to take a few minutes. Or did everybody review already? I wasn't there, so I only did a cursory look to update myself. Understood. Does anybody else need a few minutes to look it over? It's, it's no problem if you do. All right, well, if not, then do I have a motion, Robin? Okay, move to approve. All right, do I have a second? All right, thanks, Rachel. All right, any discussion on the September 2023 meeting minutes? Okay, seeing none. All those in favor of approving the September 2023 meeting minutes, please raise your hand and keep them up. So one, two, okay. All right, looks like it's unanimous. Thank you, everybody. All right, moving on. Um, agenda item number four. Uh, I know we didn't have any committee committee meetings this morning. However, um, the chairs of the the different committees have asked for just you know update items so that we can discuss as the council. So we'll go ahead and start with I and all. Mary. Thank you. Um, Dawn and I talked about this briefly um, before we the deadline to submit for a, a meeting. And mm -hmm. then I read the minutes this morning. And so there's actually more in the minutes than what <laughs> Dawn and I could discuss. So um, I know just, you know, pre, um, Robin has his hand up. Do you mean to do that, Robin? No. Oh, you have your little yellow. <laughs> and Mary, sorry, uh, no, before, that's... before you. Before you go on, I, I noticed that there is one, I think it's maybe one member of the public. 
um, Chun KB, do you mind just introducing yourself for the record? Okay. No, Chun KB. If you don't mind just turning on your microphone just to let us know who you are so we can enter that into the meeting minutes. Okay, maybe they're not listening. Well, we'll just have it reflect that. I think there's one member of the public with the screen name, Chen KB. I'm not too sure who that person is. But um, if you do at any point have any public testimony on any of the agenda items, please feel free to unmute yourself or raise your hand and then we can go ahead and take that. Sorry, Mary, go ahead. No problem. Uh, <clears throat> so, well, I know it's just, if you remember previously, we for structured our forums around the questionnaire that we sent out to the people that we considered our customers, um, the various agencies. And we pretty well completed that list or found that the subject matter was, you know, really just too deep to do in a, an hour lunchtime forum. So um, we're at the point now where we're deciding where to go next. Um, from the minutes, I can see that there's an, an interest from something to do regarding the governor's uh, housing policy, as well as the, um, um, just going blank here. Um, Michelle, exemptions, right? Yes, thank you. <laughs> exemptions. <laughs> <laughs> okay, our, our public member is um, has chatted in. They're identifying themselves as Coleco, from Hawaiian homelands and they have no testimony. Thank you very much, Chan KB. <laughs> Hello, Kaliko. Welcome to our meeting. Um, so that our plan right now was to uh, the the next one might be the exemptions with um at and asking Michelle um to be on that panel. And we have not met with Michelle or asked for anyone else that she might that we might want to have on that panel. So that I, was, I don't mean to put her on the spot. Um, Personally, I'm a little bit, uh, the governor's emergency proclamation is a mess. Um, it's kind of, it's, it's even difficult to determine which which version we should be working on. And so I think that maybe we, it's, we can keep that on our radar, but I think that we should wait until that's confirmed that what is his, what is his policy and what does he want to have go forward. Um, I want to be very respectful to Maui and anything that might impact them. And so I don't want to have us putting on a forum about the governor's plan that could have negative impacts there. So I'd rather lay low in that regard, personally. Um, if you guys want to talk me into something else, I'm open-minded. But we'd also like to have, we'd like to have more ideas <clears throat> so that we can have the, we'd like to have three to four panels per year. And so this would give us um, do this the exemptions yet before the end of this year, and then get started next year. So um, that's why we're seeking your input on ideas and beyond just ideas, but who would be good panelists if you've had if you've observed someone to talk about a subject. Um, much like we learned, you know, we, we knew what we were getting into <clears throat> with the gals from Fish and Wildlife. They did a fabulous job. And so if we can find more quality panels like that, that I think that shows well for us. So, okay. Don, would you like to add anything? Yeah, I was gonna say, we also lost a couple members, I think, because Gordon is off now. Uh, and there's, uh, who was the other person, Mahina? Roy, Roy is off, yeah. Roy, and yeah, so, you know, we're also looking for members. <laughs> You know, right. I'm sure everybody yeah, it's, it's just it's to yeah. Dawn and I. I mean, we're yeah. you know, mm -hmm. so we won't violate Sunshine Law, but you know, at the end of the day, you know, we're just and it's fine, you know, it's easy to uh plan something if we know what the topic the topic of interest is. So I think what Mary's trying to say is if you have something that is a burning need that you want us to find a panel of speakers. And then you want to hear from a specific panel, like Scott Glenn, remember we were supposed to do that energy panel and then Scott didn't show up. And then people just kind of like Wayne Tanaka just kind of dropped out. So I think we are, 
looking for, you know, more ideas as well. Yeah, I think that's something we can all definitely think on. Sorry, Michelle, were you going to say something? Go ahead. I had an idea, but it, I guess thinking about how Mary phrased uh, the, who, who the customers are being other agencies, uh, the idea I had was really more geared towards the public. And I was thinking of, of um, like, I know Ron did the, um, you know, EIS 101 or EA 101 um, forum, but focusing on how, how to comment um, sort of meaningful public engagement um, in the HIPAA process in Chapter 343. Um, just hear a lot on projects, you know, where people come, provide comment, and are very frustrated that, you know, they, don't, they sort of don't get the outcome that they're expecting um, when they come and, and provide a comment against a project or for a project or wanting something. And, and at these meetings, at least the ones I've been to, we, you know, we try to inform, you know, where we are in the process, what's considered a substantive comment, um, you know, how we take those comments and respond to them. Um, but, you know, often by the time they come to a meeting, they're, you know, they're very passionate about their issue. And unfortunately, in the 343 process, that passion doesn't translate to, uh, you know, to a substantive comment. And, you know, I see frustration build um, you know, in the community as they come out and say, okay, here you are again, you know, rubber stamping, you know, another project, um, you know, very frustrated with, uh, you know, how their, how their comments, I'm not sure that we, we can, you know, solve that problem uh, with the forum. Go ahead, Mafaala. Thanks, Michelle. Good thought. Yeah, that's, a, that's a terrific thought, Michelle. And, and I think that also frustrates agencies. I don't think it would matter who our customers are in that in that regard because the agencies could use the help of intelligent and well proffered comments. The people would feel more more heard, and the agencies would would hear. Um, so I think you know I think that 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 serves all constituencies. And there's a there's a lot going on, um, but I don't think we're like a current events group you know it's not like you know just whatever's hot at the moment i really i really think it needs to be related to 343 and it really needs to be related to the things that we have kuliana for which also which also covers um things that are specifically called out or protected in 343 or or in and eis's or in the endangered species act those kinds of things so i don't think we can we have to limit ourselves to, you know, that kind of process stuff. But, but there can be some real um, specifics for people uh, that the agencies would hear too. I will tell you, <laughs> agencies don't always know what they need to know either, and they don't have easy ways to find out or ask. And so, a group like ours doing a sort of neutral forum may meet more needs than we um, than we anticipate, or that they may. Um, ask for. Thanks, Makaala. Go ahead, Robin. Yeah, this one um, would need a lot more thought, a lot more thinking, provides a lot more risk, but also has some interesting upside if we think about it. It fits within our responsibilities to provide um, advice to OP um, and service both uh, agencies and individuals. And that would be to have an open forum with both sides or multiple sides represented around the issue of should the state have a Department of Environment. Uh, we could certainly get some legislative conversation in that. I know we had Nicole before, but we might do Gabbard or somebody else who's supportive of it, and then have somebody that's not. And uh, it's not that we have to take a stand on it, but we've already asked, um, the, the Strategic Planning Committee has already begun to address this by saying it's one of the, one of the things we should be exploring. How could we play a role in it? So, Clearly, it needs more thought, and it might not be a great idea, but it is something we may want to think about. Thanks, Robin. Yeah, I mean, I mean, hearing all of you speak on that, I think if we, we were to do, you know, focusing on how to comment, how to meaningfully engage, and even throwing in those conversations on a Department of the Environment, maybe instead of a forum, it might be more appropriate for a workshop where it is kind of open taking ideas from everybody instead of just folks talking, you know, talking to them, right? Um, talking to the public or talking to agencies because 
you know, in, in doing any, what we saw in doing the rules update, right? I mean, it's not always easy to do what what the aspirational thing of what everybody wants to do. And part of the reason it's not easy is because there's, there's some real practical difficulties, right? And so, for example, when where we ended up on the oral comments versus written comments is this new version was really an, a negotiation, but after much conversation on what's the important, you know, what, what are the important points of preserving the oral comments? Why is it difficult? The cost with transcription and all of that, right? So we, we finally came after having many, many discussions and understanding the other side and what was important to everybody, you know, somewhat of a solution to, to that, right? So, I mean, it, it kind of feels like maybe the discussion about, you know, community engagement and whatnot in these processes would fit into that maybe a more of a workshop category than a forum category. And I don't know if that's something that I know would be willing to, and if you guys think that's completely wrong, tell me too. But do you see, do you visualize this being in person or on Zoom? I think in person is more helpful, but I, I, I don't want to limit folks because there's so many folks on the neighbor islands that got to be involved too, right? So um, open to ideas. I mean, is it, it it's, t- it's tough to do hybrid, you mm-hmm. know, for those types of situations. So I don't know. What do you think? Maybe it, it might even be a more than one session kind of a thing, right? Um yeah, I think that's something we we'd have to talk about. What's the what forum do we do it in, virtual or not? Because I don't want to exclude people. And the one good thing that did come out of COVID is the Zoom and being able to include more folks with things, right? So yeah, I mean, those are the kind of logistics we got to think about. Okay. Go ahead. Um, sorry, Mary, did you have more? And then I'll go to Maka Olive. Well, I was just thinking that um, maybe we start out we we pitch it as a, like a three-step process and get people to be engaged with our third, with the, the first one being a Zoom about how to make comments, you know, like the basics, how to get heard. And then we ending up with the third um, being in person and kind of, um, I'm jumping ahead here, but um, the best venue we have for doing something is at the law school. And if we ask if we can have the law school around spring break time, which would be April. So um, just thinking out loud, but thanks. Yeah, that's a good idea. Go ahead, Makala. I I would ask the law school if they have the capacity to also be um, on Zoom to do a hybrid. Um, I think you could have a very active, lively, especially if you get not that I would expect a whole bunch of them during break, but a, a, a few good law students or whomever to come and, and to really discuss something and allow Zoom to participate as well. I, I think that that is one of the glories of current technology is that we can actually do both. And um, M- M- all that room that we, the auditorium we use, they use that and do hybrid meetings there. Right, so. right. So it's just a feature of whether or not we can, um, right. Exactly. I'm, I I just don't want to preclude one or t'other. You know, we, we can we can I think we can continue to do hybrid and I think we should continue to do hybrid as Kupuna. It it um, makes life easier for me. And I know for some of our smaller, more rural communities, it's been very beneficial. So I hope we always do. Oh, great thoughts. Well, I think, yeah, if we, if we did it as a series, that's certainly something we have a little bit more time to think about. And I like the idea of maybe doing some fully virtual and then some maybe doing hybrid in person. And depending on timing, maybe we can plan one of our, you know, bi-yearly in-person council meetings to coincide with, you know, the hybrid in-person uh, workshop for this. So I, I I know everybody's schedules are crazy too. So we'll, we'll do the best that we can. <laughs> Well, that we can, but yeah, I think those are, those are really good ideas. So um, I don't know, does anybody else have any other ideas for forums for I know? Does okay. anyone have any thoughts for, um, for persons to speak on the subject of, you know, the re- outreach, the, I think the, the basic, um, the people that teach in the, from the community access room, 
they're capable of talking about how to testify, but they don't, they don't make it very interesting. I think we need to make it more interesting. And um, I, I don't know. I think no. getting for something like this, practitioners, um, you know, both folks in the community commenting, folks who are actually the consultants who do the community outreach, and we can think of some really good ones that have done good jobs on that. Um, you know, Don, <laughs> um, Don wants to speak or or others, right? I mean, sorry, go ahead, Michelle. Thank you, unmute. Yeah, no, they usually have a session at HCPO each year about commu the community outreach part, not necessarily the how, how to comment part, but I think that would be weaved in, you know, sort of effective outreach slash, um, here's why we're reaching out to you. Here's what, here's what, you know, here's what you, you know, it's just so often, they're, you know, they, their comments are, are, you know, are dismissed in the 343 process, essentially, because they're, they're not considered substantive, you know, so many comments, people come, you know, and they've, and they've prepared very heartfelt, very heartfelt comments. Um, and the 343 response is like, that it's not substantive, you know, that it's out of scope. Um, and so I think, you know, how we can, where we can to help people see where their comments, uh, you know, can be in scope um, and have the most, um, yeah, make a difference. All right. Any other comments or thoughts or or ideas for uh, other topics for INL? All um, just to clarify for Michelle, it wasn't that um, we felt our only customer was the agencies. It was that I was referring to a survey we did a couple of years ago to the agencies as our because they were the main customers of our uh, our public report besides the legislature and so that that's all i was i didn't mean to say we don't want to talk that we don't want to serve the public because we certainly do thanks mary well yeah I, I guess before the next meeting then in november maybe we can all just kind of you know ruminate on this a little bit more and think about um the community outreach, you know, maybe workshop, we'll call that. And that's still tentative, of course, too. And other ideas for topics that we'd want INO to cover. So Mary, did I hear you right that you folks are going to proceed though with the exemptions forum by the end of the year? Yes, that's our goal. So we're looking at, um, I think we, roughly the second week in December, it's because we hadn't reached out to Michelle to find her availability and she's key to us being able to accomplish that. So um <clears throat> That's where we're headed. Great. But, oh, sorry, Onana. I was going to say for Michelle, if there are other people you want to also mm -hmm. have speaking besides yourself, you should let us know. Definitely. If you want Ron to get back on. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think, I think yeah, Ron's got the, yeah. the depth of experience and he's up for it. And I would certainly, yeah. certainly reach out, reach out to him to, to see, but. Um, yeah, I think it would be good also to have somebody uh, from one of the, you know, state or county agencies that do exemptions on a regular basis to talk about the process, the advantages of their two-part list, uh, how that's working for them, um, you know, would be, would be really key. Yeah. So, Who are the best performers in terms of um, doing, you know, get, getting on board and getting their exemptions up to date and all that? Wasn't one of them a, a, a water supply office and then... Um, somebody from Oahu, maybe DO, was it County DOT or I, I don't remember, but yes. so DLNR, DLNR yeah, DLNR publishes. they're, they're good about publishing. I think DOT does a fair bit, state DOT, um, County, I, 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 County of Maui does quite a few. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's look at those lists and see who's a, a good speaker. I know a good just because they're a great engineer on exemptions doesn't mean they can communicate. Uh, DPP also uh, publishes a lot. Yep, yep. Yeah, I, I take a look okay. at who's actually been submitting their the publications and then go from there. And if they'd even, oh, I don't know if they want to, but I mean, if they want to submit as materials and example exemption, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. determination, that would be nice to include for folks to take a look. Um, or maybe yep. even the process of when we told them it wasn't okay and what they went back and changed or something, mm -hmm. you know? Right. Yeah. 
Yeah. So just talking, talking through their list and how they use it. And at least for myself on exemption committee, one of the things that was helpful in terms of understanding the agency's process was, you know, why do they draft their list this way? And a lot of it, what we found out on exemption committee is because these are the lists that they hand to the guys in the field, right? Like, these are the things you can do. These are the things you can't. And so understanding, like, it's not the planners, it's not the folks doing the mm. legal analysis, right? So um, that's kind of w- what we found out. It really, how it functions operationally for the agencies. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Anything else, Mary? Or anybody else? That, that's all I had. Dawn, did you, did I cover it? No. Thank you. Thank you. Michelle, I'll hand it over to you for, if, I don't know if you wanted to give just a brief update on the status of the agency. Yes. Yeah, we did uh, get a list um, last week, or yeah, no, last week, from uh, County, How- County of Hawaii Office of uh, OHCD, Office of Housing and Community Development. Uh, so they submitted an exemption list for our uh, review. Um, so I have taken a, a quick look at it. It's been a busy week, so I haven't... Um, dove in too deep, but it is very, very similar to uh, HHFDC's um, exemption list. So uh, they've added some part two um, uh, activities uh, to the list that HHFDC didn't have. Uh, so I just want to review those, um, but I will hold a meeting, uh, exemption committee meeting um, next month so that we can have an internal discussion I think we discussed. Um, that would be helpful before we invite um, OHCB to our meeting and we would have an internal meeting. So I'll let OHC to know, we'll agendize it for November and then we'll invite them uh, in December to answer any questions. And if I have any questions uh, for them as I review those additional part twos, um, then I'll reach out to them for questions. But so far it looks, looks pretty good. Thanks, Michelle. Any questions for Michelle? Comments? Okay. Thank you. Um, Staff, I'll hand it over to you for the annual report committee update. Thanks, Onauna. Um, so it was a while ago, guys, but um, if you all recall, in March of 2023, at our full council meeting, we approved that the 2023 annual report is gonna follow the same format as our 2022 annual report. So that's gonna include having each standing committee. So I know exemptions, strategic planning, rules, and legislative. Is that right, Onana? Five currently. Um, So each of those committees will issue a concise summary of what was accomplished for the year. And we also talked about and approved that each committee could conclude that summary with sort of a guiding or reflective sentence or two. So that could include recommendations or lessons learned. We're really just looking for a paragraph um, to stick with sort of the two page um, limit. That it, it's really not a limit, but to, to increase our readership as much as possible, which we know is limited. And while this is a total moving target, um, you know, there is the potential that our report would be included in um, an OPSD report should one be happening this year, which I I don't think it is. Um, But those are sort of the assumptions and the boundaries that we have um, to work in. And I'd be happy to open it up in terms of when committee chairs and committees thought that that summary what a appropriate deadline for that would be. Um, you know, we we want to get the annual report done by the end of January. Um, so ideally, if folks think they can get get me a summary um, of their committee accomplishments by our next meeting, um, that would be fine on my end. But you all you all let me know. Thanks, Steph. 
Okay, and it looks like Mike is joining right now. So before I go on to discussion of timeline, let's let Mike go ahead and um, introduce himself. Hey, Mike, how are you doing? You want to go ahead and just state your name for the record? State your name for the record. Michael Tulang, Big Island Mavoy. All right. Hi, Mike. Nice to see you. So we're, we're just talking about the annual report um, and then we're, we're going to start talking about, you know, potential timelines. So um, thank you, Steffi. I appreciate that. And, and, and working backwards as we discuss the timeline, I believe our report is due to the legislature by the end of January. Um, Jen or Kim or Katie, I don't know if you know when OPSD would need it to insert into their report or one of those reports. I, I mean... We at the moment. Okay, okay. So why don't we just assume we need to approve our final report by our January meeting, which would be last year, I think we moved our January meeting to the second meeting in January just because of the, the holiday. Um, we haven't talked that far schedule yet. So that that's something that we, we can also adjust as a group. Um and so yeah, we the first Tuesday is going to be the second of January. Right, which is the day after the new year. Yeah. So, yeah, so right. either first day back to work. Right. Yeah. We can either move the January meeting to, you know, later in that first week or just move it to the Tuesday, the following week, if that works best for folks. Um, so that's up for discussion as well. But presumably if we're doing a final approval, we we need to see a drop at least by November. Um, right to get a first look, deal with any revisions that need to be made to the draft to get a final approval to the council by January. So, yeah, I, I would say, Steph, if we, I'll, I'll, I'll be the one who's a little firmer, committee chairs, can you work on getting a draft of your paragraph or two to Steph um, ahead of the next meeting or by the next meeting at the latest? I, I don't know, Steph, what do you think? Well, if it's by the next meeting, you will not have a draft to review. So if the council is right, going right. to want two months to review it, then it's going to have to get to me in the next two weeks. Yeah. And if folks think that that's too soon. And part of this was recognizing that we've done this before. It's a pretty easy lift. And I wanted all of the committees. to. I didn't want to front load this in July yeah. and take up half of our year. Right. I mean, there's there's been particularly on the INO front and exemptions. I mean, all of you have done fantastic given, given the bounds with which we're working in. Um, so I wanted to give each committee time mm -hmm. to really fulfill those annual yeah. um, needs. Yeah. So, so if anyway, you, you know, yeah, I think by next, I will, if they at least get it done by the next meeting, get it to you. That means we can get that next meeting is November. That means we can see a draft in December right for a final approval in January. So I, I, I do think that timeline still works. Yeah, I do yeah. too. Yep. But if you guys can get it done sooner, that that's obviously better. And if everybody gets it in in the next two weeks, then depending on stuff schedule, if we can get if we get it because we need it a week ahead to be agenda right. for our agenda for October. That's the thing. So for, what's the specific date? Yeah. Yeah. What's the specific date um, if you want it? In two weeks, yeah. give us a specific, be, be, be anal for us here and tell us exactly <laughs> when you want it. Okay, so, and that's the other thing. We got to be better about our agendas, guys, because I know we've been cutting it close. So, okay, our next meeting is currently, let's talk about that November 7th, which is technically election day. In mm. the election years, we move it. Is there a need to move this November? Let's start with that first, because that'll determine no need, right? This is not a not a presidential election. Okay, so our meeting's going to be November 7th. Um, agendas are due November 3rd. Is that correct, ERP? No. They would need to be in on... Oh, wait, yep. Yeah. They got to be posted on November 1st. October 27th. We got to turn them in yeah. by October 27th. October 27th would be the date, yeah, for. Like tomorrow already. <laughs> basically. Basically, yeah, the Friday before. So October 27th would be the last day to get it, to get our agendas in. So for Steph, how long do you need to 
cool things to get. I mean, should we say October 23rd? So you have four days to format, edit any typos or anything that looks, you know. Yeah, that's no problem. And we can, you know, yep. Okay, drafts due Monday, October 23rd to stuff. Okay. Yeah, and all you console chairs, committee chairs can just send it right to me. And I did also want to note that this isn't going to go to the ledge, right? This is going to go to OPSD. Uh, T TBD, oh, it is, Kim? Okay. And then, and then OPSD will transmit it to the legislature for us, correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, so eventually it, it will go to the legislature. Okay, so just repeating those I'm, deadlines. I'm, I'm, Sorry, go ahead, Robin. I'm a bit confused in that I thought the OPSD was not going to be doing an annual report. They so, don't do their own annual report, but they will still accommodate transmitting our annual report to the les legislature for us. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yeah. That's my understanding. Okay. Will they, also, will they be submitting other um, reports from other components of their, uh, their Kuliana or just us? We have other annual report requirements as part of OPSD. I think we have a meeting where we're going to have another annual report meeting um, for all of OPSD. Okay. Yeah. Later. Later. So, yeah, can, can we ask at the next meeting, so the November meeting, if Mary Alice or somebody from ERP can just let us know what um, OPSD's timeline is and the other annual reports and when we when is our absolute deadline to get something to you folks. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so repeating one more time, drafts from the committee chairs are due to staff on Monday, October 23rd. The agenda deadline for the, our November 7th meeting is Friday, October 27th. Um, and make sure Allison is copied on all of the agenda trans transmittals, including me, and sending it to the, the general DBED email. Sorry, wait. Um, About the agenda deadline, why, why is it the 27th? It's the Friday, because it has to be six days before. It may six come calendar days. On. Yeah, so it needs to be posted by Wednesday. Well, it needs to be posted by Wednesday, but ERP has asked us to get it to them. The Friday before. Ah. Uh, get yeah. ahead of time so that we don't um, run into posting issues last minute. Okay, yeah. sorry. No, I thought I thought you were saying the 27th was the, the our deadline. internal yeah. internal agenda deadline. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sorry, and then just lastly, Onana, um committee chairs, um, you know, the 2022 report is a you know, really good example of what to follow um, to make this easy for you all. So, and if you don't have that, I'd be happy to send it to whoever needs it. It's it's in our file though. So, thank it's you. On our, it's on our it's on our website. Where I'm we... pretty sure it's in our yeah our files at hawaii.gov. May you know what? Maybe I can put it in the chat. Yeah, you've been, um, yeah, but I can work on that while you guys okay. carry on. Thanks, Steph. So that'll be, yeah, that'll be the deadlines for November. And then at the November 7th meeting, which we will keep on the 7th, we'll talk about future, further deadlines for, you know, a revised draft. But uh, presumably that'll just come from any minor edits that need to be made. Um I'm sorry, Steph, pro probably by you at that point since you'll have everybody's drafts, but we'll see what needs to be done, right? Right, and, so and I think what happened last year, Onana, is there was some closing language in the 2022 um, report that you wanted to edit further, um, which is great. Um, but I, I actually think that we turned in that annual report a little later, and that was fine because that coincided with OPSD's timeline so right, right yeah and i'm happy to help do final eyes and final reviews and whatnot as well so thanks 
All right. Any questions or comments on the timeline or content? Okay. Well, thank you very much, Steph and everyone. Thanks in advance to the chairs for getting your, your drafts into stuff. All right, so we'll move on to agenda item number seven, which is a strategic planning committee update. So Robin, I'll hand it over to you. Yeah, I just really wanted to give everybody a chance to say um, if they had any recommendations for the strategic planning committee to work on. Uh, we've had a report, previous meetings, and there were four or five issues that were our charge and we, have, we approached and relatively accomplished most of them. Um, one of the last ones was, how can we be supportive of the Department of Environment? And we haven't really moved on that. So I just wanted to give us an all, give everybody an opportunity to think about um, what, if anything, they'd like the Strategic Planning Committee to focus on uh, as we move forward. Go ahead, Makaala. Is there any um, already prepared verbiage on the, you don't have an argument from me, but just for public purposes that the the reason for another department i mean as good as this one would be and as important as i think it is to me personally and to the work i do um i do have a community that you know thinks government is way too big already and too difficult to move and da 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 so did did we ever have i don't remember ever seeing a list of and we need this because bullet points dot 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 or these are the things that are not happening because we don't have it, dot, dot, dot. So I think, and well, sorry, Mary, you have your hand up first. Did they, do, did they do a sunrise audit on this? I don't know if they did an audit, but I know there were in the past few fewer legislative sessions, there were bills introduced. And so, you know, in the purpose section ones of, of those bills, and maybe that's something Robin, for the next meeting, if you don't mind pulling, maybe we can agendize um, that just the, you know, the bills for the Department of the Environment and the reasons for it. Right. And I know in past discussions we've had on this, um, part of the reason is, you know, taking and part of the reason for pulling OEQC out of Department of Health. Right. Is just there are different aspects of the 343 process and environmental planning and whatnot, that should be separate from environmental quality, for example, right? That So there's a lot of things in different departments in Department of Land and Natural Resources and OPSD and Department of Health that they're, they're, they're siloed, but really from like a better planning perspective, maybe all of these things should be in, in one, under one roof, so to speak, right? So I think that's a very um, simplified explanation of you know, my understanding, at least, of why the Department of the Environment has been proposed and others may have, have thoughts that they want to share on that. Well, I know legally they have to do a sunrise audit. Or I mean, an audit might be the wrong word, but I remember when we wanted to even get, we, we were trying to get a new department within DCCA for home inspectors. And we got killed in the sunrise audit. They couldn't justify the um what it would cost to have a, a department chair and a staff and all of that um mm -hmm. it was just financially there weren't enough in this in my example they weren't there weren't enough complaints enough people wronged financially to justify what the state's expense would be to so that's something we need to think about if we want this department of environment how are we going to make the world so much better but because we're going to spend a half a million dollars on administration that's oh. there was also some early discussion. I don't remember how this factually ended, but there was some question about the state constitution or not correct me here, limiting the state to the number of departments and that we were at that limit. Um, I remember Scott, talking with Scott about that. So I that may a con con in order to add another department, right? So. Yeah. So it, it got, you know, the, it was more than a heavy. Yes. <laughs> I just can see part. OEQC wants con con so they can have, grow government, you know, I mean, it just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so I, I and that's Might be a way to do away with ourselves. <laughs> right. Well, I, maybe that's part of the larger discussion, because I know there are, I think, you know, um, Rep. Nicole Lowen is still very much, you know, in favor of Department of the Environment. So 
you know, the conversation is likely not just creating a new department, but then what other departments can be consolidated, right? Or what other processes need to be taken so that we don't need to have a con con? Um, are there, you know, duplicative departments, you know, within within government that might not be needed? Also controversial, right? Now, are you getting rid of people's jobs and whatnot? But um, it's 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 a bigger problem, you know, really above all of our the zero pay that we get for doing this job. But <laughs> maybe we can start figuring out some of these issues. Um, you know, to at least frame it for the folks that have been, you know, really pushing these measures or pushing these ideas. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I think um, we, because of our relationship with Nicole Lowen and Mike Gabbard, we thought we would incur, in, um, inquire of them what role we might play in this public discussion. Um, you know, I, I don't know that could run the gamut from having a workshop or, you know, just putting something in our in one of our reports or something like that, or doing nothing at all. But there was a recommendation that the Strategic Planning Committee engage with <clears throat> the, the, depart the issue of the Department of Environment. I'll put together some information for the next meeting on what the bill looked like um, and who were the, uh, you know, how did it do in the ledge, so. Yeah. But hey, there anything me... Go ahead, I'm sorry, Anana. I was just gonna say that would be great if you don't mind just, identifying the bill numbers and, and whatnot, the years, and we can link them in the agenda so folks can, you know, take a peek at them and see what they've looked like in past years. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll work on that. Um, are there other issues that you all would like the Strategic Planning Committee to address? Um, you know, I'll go first if nobody else has anything. I, I, I think the, the other thing, just to, because of where we are in the year and maybe... I put this under strategic planning, but maybe it's a discussion with legislative committee on, you know, again, coming back to where there are any um, legislative priorities that we need to start getting gearing up to bring to the legislators. Um, Robin and I usually meet with yeah, Senator Gabbard and, and Rep Lowen in December, you know, in anticipation of the upcoming legislative, you know, session. So if, if folks have any ideas or, or recall anything, um, I, I know in the, we've talked about the annual report again. I, I'm hesitant to suggest just just an edit for the annual report, but um, if there are other, are other bigger issues that you know we want to raise to them, this is our opportunity to do it. Our meeting with them is really just primarily to hear from them what are their priorities for the session so we can kind of keep an eye out. Okay, Makaala and then Don. Statewide not just according to me, but according to people and according to Don Chang, everyone is frustrated with Dilbor. And she seems to have her hands tied by, you know, union agreements, et cetera, et cetera. And Ed Underwood is civil service. Is that really what's happening to our state government? Is it just one department can go completely rogue and not be able to be reined in? The issue is they bring money into the Hawaii coffers via their permits. So they issue permits all over the place. The harbors can't handle, the land can't handle, the people can't handle. It's, it's a nightmare everywhere. It's blown up on Kauai three times. And I know it's blown up elsewhere. Um, statewide Makai Watch is grumbling about it everywhere. So what, what, what in the world can be, it seems to me, I don't know if it's a legislative fix or someone just needs to strike a match, but somewhere along the line, here's a department that is conflicted within itself. And I would really like to hear from Lowen and Gabbard on what they think about this, because every conversation I have with Don Chang, just, you know, she knows it's a problem. She talks about the problem. She doesn't seem to have any, any potential resolution to it. So, uh, and sorry, I'm not super versed in the Dober issue. Makaala's, uh, when I'm taking some notes, that's why I, I paused. So they are responsible for issuing permits yeah. for commercial uses. 
and with each permit comes a fee paid by that company to the state. A fee per person, a fee per harbor use, whatever the structure is, and that does that does shift depending upon location. Um, and so they are issuing permits willy-nilly all over the place. They issued three permits on Kauai for a place that doesn't even have a facility, and the county had to say no. The county had to fight to say no because the state allowed them to have the boats in the water, but people couldn't get on the land. I mean, it's a mess. So it seems to me that's a conflict. DOFA doesn't collect money. State Parks certainly does. State Parks collects money and it goes into a special fund and it goes into management of parks, right? I don't know what other departments do, but that department seems to be less than controversial. I mean, everybody wishes the parks were better and wishes they had more money and yada yada, but um, I don't think very many of our departments actually collect money for what they do. But when the previous governor required a, a standard percentage, and I think it was 10, I could be wrong, asked, you know, required, EJ required a 10% cut across the board. Dobor was forced to do that, but they made up for it by issuing all these other permits. So they didn't have any reduction in force. They didn't have any change to their operations, which is all well and good, except the communities and the land took the hit. And there was no planning involved. They just do it. There's no, there's no, there's no procedure where the where Dobor says to to whomever is at the county, whether it's state land or county land, so can you handle this capacity? Can you take this added added use? Sorry, muted my own self. Um, so at any rate, I, I, that's that's the issue in a nutshell. And it, it the reason I bring it up is that it isn't just Kauai. It is every single island. And um, if you, you, you sit in on the, Maka, the statewide Makai Watch meetings, everybody's screaming. And don't care, can't, I mean, you can't do anything. They've issued the permit. What are you going to do? Anyway, that I just I, I just have to wonder how can one department be so rogue? Rogue is my word. Maybe they'd say independent. Maybe they'd say you know self-sustaining. Rogue is my word. I mean, it's something we can ask the question to. I I, I don't know if that's totally a legislative fix or I don't know. That's what I'm saying. How do you fix it? If you don't fix it, civil service, you don't fix it by your DLNR boss, you don't fix it by, what do you do? Is it, are we back to Cayetano saying all boats out of the water? I mean, I don't know how you fix it. It's a significant personality issue as well. Um, and, yeah, and that for is, sure. it's a very loaded conversation. And you're right, it's, I can't, we've had significant issues with them here, small island that we are and and not favorable and it it's often boiled down to one individual and uh he's he's a piece of work so i'm not sure how we deal with that with gabbard and lowen i think we can probably generalize it about conversations about dobar but it's a, it would have to be very delicate in our conversation it'd be okay with me robert if you generalized it even more than that if you just generalized it as to um because I still think it would be somewhat productive to any department that collects a fee and the management of that fee and, and what the potential glitches are um, for them to collect more for them, for, for the, for the, for the hit on the environment mm -hmm. because of that structure, because that's what's happening. It's an environmental hit. And yeah. um, it's, it's, it's really, really, really bad. Our local fishermen can't, I mean, it's really bad. And Dawn seems to be like this. She cannot, and she she knows the issues. She knows the, the story. She was the AD for DOT when they had harbors. She She's not coming into this green at all. Right. It's, it's really down to one, one thing. It's down to that civil service position. How do you even get move them? I don't, I mean, is it that simple? that we need a procedure to move a civil service person? 
or shoot him in the alley. I don't know what you do with him. This meeting's being recorded, Makala. So gentle I'm reminder. Just, you know, at some point. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, I can't comment on, you know, I, I've never been a public servant, but I, what I understand it is a pretty difficult process from that standpoint. But as you're speaking, you know, perhaps Robin, one way we can raise it is, I, I guess if there was state legislation that said only X, you know, if there were permit limits, numbers in statute, role roles would have to follow at the agency level to implement that um so we have that for Hanale right so and, just, and, he, and and that's the only that's the only reason mm -hmm. I would he, bet I would bet significant chunks of, of real money um that both Lowen and Gabbard have heard this complaint from constituents this is not new this has been going on for you I've been I've been here this iteration for 20 years and he he's he's and at the center of many issues we've had at our harbor throughout that period. So uh, just to move us on, I think it's, it's uh, thank you, uh, Makala. We will raise that permit issue as delicately as and, and, and equally forcefully as we can, which reminds me then, um, no, no, we should start getting, we should, I should communicate with them to get on their calendar because they're going to start getting pretty busy, even even if we don't have a specific agenda yet. Right, right. Yeah, I, at least for us to hear what their priorities are. And then by then we can, um, we'll have had another council meeting and can further continue this discussion for folks. Too. Yeah. So why don't I write up something and ask them for like mid-November or something like that? Sure, sure. Um, no. Yeah, or even early December, I think might be good. Okay. If they have something. All right. Yeah, sorry, Don, did you have your hand up? I want to make sure I don't miss you. Uh, yeah, I did. Uh, you know, Maka'ala, I was going to say in um, more, maybe what you're, what you're really trying to say is you want to know the 343 impact to the state waters, the marine waters with the unintended consequences of permits that are being authorized, uh, not in, you know, in areas that aren't allowed to have aquatic or boating um does that make sense? Like, or even areas that are allowed. So, so existing harbors right now that have historically had X number, he's just adding, adding, adding. So yeah. even yeah, you're well said, Don. But 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 without the, I mean, even even in harbors, that yeah, wasn't but, the numbers problem. And and the reason why I say that is, you know, Lahaina Harbor is wiped out, and everyone's now trying to move their. Uh, uh, what is it? Um, the permit is it? What is the the word for the permits for the shoreline permits where the catamarans come onto the beach, and so a lot of the companies now are trying to come onto different beaches everywhere in Maui because Mahaina is no longer there, and um, we also had a problem with Mala Wharf where commercial activities were being done, but Mala Wharf was made for local residents to do recreational diving and not commercial. And all of a sudden there's all this commercial activity that's not being uh, maintained. So I think maybe what you're just asking for is what's the 343 impact to tie it back to our committee? Um, because obviously there's in my area in Lahaina and Maui, uh, you know, there's a huge impact on recreation, commercial fishing, uh, user diving, swimming you know it's like uh the ormra issue with uh the swarp with dlnr and also with um office of planning uh but what i wanted to say is when you talk to rep lowen i would like to know where the board secretary is for the governor because you know to get uh any comment about our term limits is really important and also how can we get new members more members you know, since now we're down a couple of people. So I think the board secretary is really important in terms of the legislature can do something about that, I think. Yeah, and and let me work on that first. You know, we actually have, and I, I, Makal, I think you sent me somebody and Roy actually sent me somebody um, for potential new members. So I do think we have some folks that are putting in applications. So I will work with boards and commissions on that within the next uh, few weeks to try and at least start filling in the membership. And even for you, Donna, we got to get you reappointed. So these were all things that they just ignored us last 
last legislative session um, with, with the changeover to the to the new administration. But we'll, we'll check with um, Senator Gabbard and Rep. Lowen too, but I'll, I'll work with boards and commissions directly on that as well. Thank you. All right, anybody else have anything? And I mean, if you do think of something before our November meeting, and that's why Robin, I was thinking if we, if we got like an early December meeting, that might be good. It gives us a little time to meet again and think of stuff. Um, please let let us know, and we can we can add it to the list of of issues that we can raise to them. Okay. Anything? Any other topics for strategic planning committee at this time? Robin, anything else from you? No, this is very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So the next thing I did have on our agenda is, you know, just continued discussion. Um, the last two meetings, we did talk a little bit about the emergency proclamation, some questions we had. We're hoping to, you know, maybe get um, Nani Medeiros or Scott Glenn to come and speak to us, you know, uh, as I'm sure everybody knows, um, early in September, Nani resigned, right? And uh, a second housing proclamation was issued um, where there, there have been some changes. So in the agenda, I did link, you know, the second proclamation and also um, governor's, you know, essentially press release that was posted on September 15, which talks about what are the changes between the first emergency proclamation and the, the second emergency proclamation. So um, related to, to our group, uh, the second Proclamation does restore chapter 343 review, according to the website. Um, so I'll, I'll just kind of leave it at that. I don't know what questions or comments folks want to to offer at this time with this discussion. I, I, I did not reach out to um, folks to try and get a speaker for this meeting just because of, you know, the changes that that happened with personnel and whatnot in early September. Um, but if we do want us to invite people for November, let me know and we can try to do that. Go ahead, Robin. Have you heard anything? Um, I know Scott was working closely with, um, uh, what was her name, Nani Medeiros. Um, do you, have you heard anything from Scott about where he is now? No, I, I have not. I haven't um, been able to have contact with him since before that happened. So I'll, I'll reach out again, though. Yeah, I, I did. And I haven't heard back from him. So I'm just curious where, where he's landed. Yeah. Um, but... Yeah, no, I, I think you I know, heard I heard that he's working special projects for the governor. OK, that makes sense. Um, my two cents on this emergency proclamation is I think it was Mary who said it earlier. It, it's changing so much. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure we can comment on it. I mean, I've noticed a lessening of, of objections, but not a not a complete disappearance of them at all. There's still a lawsuit pending on Anna. Is that right? Do you know that? That was my understanding from our last discussion. I, I I don't know for a fact whether it is or is not. So I, I think it would be, you know, it would be great if we had somebody knowledgeable come and talk with us about it at our next meeting. But yeah, I'll reach out again to see if I can get any anybody to come and, you know, give us yeah. a and if I remember what I read, they, they they one of the changes was not to have a single person with that responsibility, but to have a there's a group now, four or five, if I remember correctly. And maybe that group or one person from that group might come. Okay. All right, I'll, I'll reach out to see who we can maybe get to speak about that for November. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else wanna talk about this or review it a little bit more? Yeah, it's it's an ever changing, changing thing right now. I'm not seeing much comments on it, so we'll just leave it for here. Um, I'll see if I can get somebody and I'll agendize it for November again as well. And if, you know, we still have a couple of things up on the agenda, folks want to bring it up again, we can do that. So for, for now, we'll just go ahead and move on. Um, you know, I linked our member terms document again. Uh, I didn't take Roy off yet, but yeah, Roy Roy completed his, his tour with us and, and Gordon also completed his term. Um, there's going to be quite a few people coming off in 2024. I think Maka'ala, we have you until March. 
I think we have Ron until March. Um, I think Mahina comes off in February. Me and Steph are off in November. So let's see who else. Mike, I gotta, Mike, I still gotta figure out when your first term was to calculate your total time. And same for Tessie, because I think you both are through June 2024 as well. But I don't, I don't think you guys <clears throat> your your full eight years so i'll try to track down your your full terms but um yeah that's that's a big changing of the guard basically coming up real soon within the next year so uh, uh, go ahead mary no oh, no no i've been on the commission longer than 2022 oh yeah i think you actually know so you, your term I think I, second you're coming off soon you're coming off in you 2024 as well. Yep. You're you're saying I'm off in 2026, but that would mean I would have been on for 12 years. No, the pro I think the problem was that both, oh, shoot, I don't know how come yours is 2026. I think some people's terms got renewed for longer than they're supposed to be on. And I think you might be. <laughs> so yeah, I think you're coming off in 2024. Thanks for pointing that out. Let me go ahead and edit that for our next version. I, gotta do I think your that's thing. exactly it, because I was the same way, right? Yeah, Until Steph I and I were together. Look. And we came on at the same time, I think, Mary. So Yeah, we did. And Onona, right? Yeah, all, all three of us. Yeah. So I think yeah. we got married till November 2024 as well. Yeah, so a, a lot of us are coming off in 2024. Um, again, so I think for, for each of us, if we can get one, one person to apply, that would be really good. So Makala, mm -hmm. thank you. I know she got she got somebody to apply. Robin, Robin's coming off soon. Robin, did we figure out when your first term was yet? Did you hit your full eight years? You came on a little bit later. Um, Robin's pretty. after us. Yeah. So I think you can get reappointed for another term. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I got to find your guys first terms. There are some folks that I didn't have all of the information for. Um, so I will run that down before our next meeting so that we can know for sure. But for every anybody coming off in 2024, please start your recruiting. Roy sent us somebody. Makaala is working on someone. Um, I know Ron recruited Michelle. That was his his exit plan. <laughs> so we got her on a little early. Um, but yeah, that, I, that, that's all I wanted just to get this in front of people again. So I'll send out, I'll have another revised version before the next meeting if folks can just start recruiting and it, it, even if you have more than one person in mind, of course, because we don't we don't all know who's gonna make it through, right? Um, and so the message to them in recruiting is that send them the boards and commissions website link, or if you wanna just, you know, copy me on an email and introduce, I can send them the link. What we need them to do is apply through boards and commission, not, not super hard, you upload your resume, provide a little bit of information, right? Um, select the board that you wanna apply to. And then once they get an application and it, I can approach- Dawn is no longer alone in the room. <laughs> yeah. I, I can go ahead and um, reach out to boards and commission and say, hey, we know so-and-so applied. Can, can you help us, you know, get this point, this person appointed? So that, that's generally the process that we're, we're going. I nominate my dog to take my position. <laughs> this is Shinka. <laughs> I don't know if the dog falls under the definition of employee, but. <laughs> She's a good listener. <laughs> All right. Any question on member terms? Yeah. Recruitment? No. Okay. <laughs> well, I'll have that on the agenda again for next time. Um, agenda item number 10, the meeting for Tuesday, November 7th. We've already discussed that. Oh, go ahead, Makala. Oh, you're not? Okay. Yep. So, all right. So everybody's okay with that Tuesday, November 7th for our next meeting. All right. Um, and then just a few reminders, um, we did, you know, ethics committee reached out to us, I think, and Allison, did we, everybody's up to date on ethics training, correct? Or we, was somebody missing their 2023 financial disclosure? I don't know if you can remind me. Or is that Jenner, Kim, do you, do you guys recall? We have one member who is delinquent on their financial disclosure, but we're not sure if it's necessary, correct, Allison? Uh, yeah, I I just made an informal call to Ethics Commission just to check Um, because EACs, their duties changed from before. I wasn't sure whether um, financial disclosures were still required. Mm -hmm. And the response was, we're not sure. We're going to check and get back to you. Yes. Yeah. We also, oh, we also have three members who are not up to date on their ethics training. Um, 
didn't want to name you, so please reach out to us if you're not sure. Um, and then we are we have to re report to them tomorrow on the percentage of our board who is compliant. Okay. So, did, did you folks get a list though of who did it? Yes. yes. Okay. And I thought you folks, did you reach out individually to those members? I oh, did. We left it in the email so that to reach out to us because we didn't want to you know, blast it out to everybody. Um, so we do have that list. Um, we can take the self-guided online ones. We don't set up for a live one. But I think they said it's like half an hour to an hour. How so often do we have to do it? Uh, once every four years. Oh, I know. I'm okay. I did it. All right. Yeah, th thank you for answering that question, because I think that was some of the questions. I know a lot of us, I thought it was implemented last year, right? Wasn't that a new requirement last year? So if you did it last year, I think you should be okay. But if anybody did not do do it, please do it. it it's it's fairly, it's 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 simple. Like they said, about a, about a half an hour, you just do it online, um, just to make sure that we are all compliant. If you have your, um, like a certificate that you completed it, if you could send that to us, that might be good too, because it's, there is a website that you can um, look it up online. And that's what we've been checking to make sure everybody's um, names are compliant. And so if we can't find you online and you think you've done it, then that may be an issue. So. Okay. Could you resend that email you said to click here or something like that? Could you resend that? Because I I'm sure I just I was sure I did it and dismissed it and I'm but oh thank you Allison <laughs> there it is oh sorry no, that's um that's a PDF that has what the requirements are um, oh okay yeah Jen can, can you resend the email that you sent out to the members and then um yeah I think I thought a lot of us had sent our certificates into less back in the day but I don't know if that's just caught in. I mean, that would have been like a year ago, at least, or whenever the requirement came in. So I know that's a lot to dig through. I don't know if that got saved anywhere. So yeah, if, if you folks can find your um, ethics completion, it, it would have been an email that said, hey, you completed it. And if you haven't, I, I think a couple of folks more recently did send it in already to ERP. Um, but if you can just go ahead and resend it and they can save it into a new file. Um, okay, so yeah, I think the, the thing, the, well, the thing Allison sent doesn't let me check to see if I'm done. So you might have to log into, I think it's this one. Oh, the second one. Report. Okay. All righty. So if you, if you completed um, your ethics training between January 1st, 2020 and January 1st, 2023, then your initial training is done. Yeah. And there's four years after that. Otherwise, you have to complete the training by 2024. By the end of 2024 or by the start of? Start. Okay. If you haven't attended any ethics training, like the online one, or if your last training was before January 1st, 2020, okay. then you need to do it before, by January 1st, 2024. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, everybody check your check your records on that and send that to ERP um, if you have completed it. And if not, please complete it by the end of the year. And then hopefully by the next meeting, we'll have a response from the Ethics Commission on whether or not we need to continue to do financial disclosure. So that would be nice if we don't, just because it's one more thing to add to our list of things to do. <laughs> Although they've made that pretty easy compared to how it used to be. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, at least it rolls over, right, from the year. Yeah. I mean, application yeah okay. when I was on state foundation and culture and the arts I mean you had to like you know give them hard copies of stuff mm -hmm. okay. so you mean capital modern it's still the Hawaii state foundation on culture and the arts it's just that the high sand building is now called capital Mar modern yes yes I, I, I and know. that's where um, the heartburn is because I people know. miss just high sand just finding a way to hassle you since I haven't done it at all meeting long. <laughs> Capital <Okay>. Mountain. <laughs> I just saw that sign today. I didn't know they changed it. I drove by it and I was like, what yeah. is that? I was like, oh, is that a new restaurant? Okay, thank you for <laughs> clarifying that. Um, all well, right. It's well, partly the outfall of having, you know, I mean, Alison Wong is fabulous as a director, but she comes from the modern art world and not the folksy kind of high Sam stuff. So... 
change. It's important. We have to allow it to occur. Without change, you have no growth. And if you have no growth, you only have death. <laughs> all right. Well, that's all I have for you folks. ERP, do you have anything else for us? Reminders or announcements? No. Allison, anything else on your end? Oh, and, and um, I... I don't think this will affect EAC, but I am going to be on vacation from the 12th to the 25th. October, October 12th to 25th? Okay. Yeah. Thanks for letting us know. All right. Any other announcements or questions from the council or members of the public? All right. Well, I thank you all for your time. We'll see you again on November 7th. Again, as a reminder, any homework you have due is due to Steph on Monday, October 23rd. Uh, agendas for committee chairs are due on Friday, October 27th. Okay. And I just sent an email to all the committee chairs with the 2022 annual report and a reminder of the, the need and the deadline. So thanks, everyone. Steph. All right. And thank you, everybody. Have a good day. I'll see you folks in November. Yeah.